from MathMojo.com, and we're here with a particularly diabolical Ken Ken, not only because it's nine squares by nine squares, but also because there is no uh, operation sign like multiplication, division, subtraction, or addition. So you don't know if this is going to be a uh, quotient or a product or a sum or a difference to reach this final number. And the rules of Ken Ken are, as you pretty well know, if you're attacking a 9 by 9 Ken Ken, if, if you're a beginner, this isn't for you, I must say. Although you're welcome to try it and prove me wrong. And uh, that would be great. Let me know if you do. <laughs> the rules are you're not allowed to repeat a digit in any row or any column. In other words, I can't have a 9 here and a 9 here, or a 6 here and a 6 here. They have to be all different, and you have to use all 9 for 9 by 9, Ken Ken. And the other rule is, you have to use the digits in any area to come up with this final number. So in other words, I could multiply or divide. This could be like a 1 plus a 3. No, it couldn't, <laughs> because that would have to be 12. This could be like, let's say, a 5 and a 6 and a 4 to add up to 15. But it could also be a 1, a 3, and a 5 to multiply to 15. Either way, it's got to come up to 15, and you can't repeat any numbers in rows or columns. That pretty much covers the rules. They're pretty simple. Now let's see where we can start with this. Well, the first one is going to be a gimme. This is a 7. The only thing it could be is a 7. I'm going to make it a European 7, so I won't, uh, I'll be able to distinguish it later. Now, um, one of the things that I like to do when I do a Ken Ken, and you don't have to do this, it's probably not the best way to do it, but it's just the way that works for me, is I'll write the number really large when I, when I know the answer for sure. Until I do know the answer for sure, though, if the number could be a possibility, I'm going to write it very small. And I'll usually write it in the area that's represented by nine mini squares in any square. For example, I'd write a 1 there, I'd write a 2 there, a 3 there. If I was going to write a 7, I would write it there. A 5, I would write there. A 9 would go there. You see, see what I mean? They're all going in the quadrants, which sort of makes sense. So visually, I do this with Sudoku also. Sudoku is usually a 9 by 9, so it's very easy to do this. When you're doing a different Ken Ken, like a 4x4 four four or a 6x6, six six, I break the box up into four squares or six little squares. But I try to make it visually easy for me to see where the number goes. For example, if I had the digit 5 in here, I wouldn't put it here. I would just put it here. So I would know by glancing without actually having to read it that that's where the 5 belongs. Now let's erase all of those. Um, this may take a little bit. Uh, I'm just getting used to my technology here, so uh, please bear with me. I'll get better at this as we go along, and so will you, I hope. Okay, so what do we know? We know that's a 7 for sure. What else do we know? Not too much right off the bat. There's nothing really easy. Well, there are, but uh, they're very hard to come by. Uh, once you figure them out, you'll remember them for later, and they'll be easy for the next time. But for something like this, I'm not going to tackle this two first because it's, believe it or not, it's not one of the easier ones among, well, yeah, it's not really. Anyway, this could be a 1 times a 2, in which case I'd have a 1 here and a 2 here, but it could also be a 2 times a 1. Okay, it could be a 3 minus a 1, so 3 and 1 would work there, and putting the 3 in here you see I goofed up already, right? I'm going to change because I've, I've transposed these. Let me go back. Bear with me. This won't happen a whole bunch. Um, this is going to get better as it goes along. Uh, let's see. Okay. I can put a 1 there and a 2 there. And a 1 there. And a 2 there. And 3 minus 2 would give me 1. And 3 here minus 2 would give me 1. You see how we're, there's a lot of squares that could be used. It could also be a 4 here divided by this 2. And it could be a 4 here divided by that 2. It could be a 5 
minus this 3, and it could be a 5, minus that 3. It could be a 6 divided by 3, by this 3. This 6 divided by this 3. It also could be a, this 6 minus this 4. There are a lot of combinations. So 6 would work here too. Of course, 7 minus this 5 would work. So that means 7 minus this 5 would work. 8 minus 6, or 8 divided by, f uh, 8 minus this 6, and 8 divided by 4 would also work. So it would an 8 over here. And 9 minus 5, uh, 9 minus 7, this 9 minus this 7 could also uh, give us 2. So as you can see, we haven't been able to eliminate anything at all in here. That's why I didn't actually want to start with 2. But you can see how this sort of works. And I'm sure you knew that stuff already. Thank you.